We're three minutes early. <laughs> but, uh, you know, David, when I go fishing, my, my graph is my most important tool. And a lot of people, especially with electronics nowadays, with the live scope and all the forward, forward facing sonar and all these new, uh, ways of seeing fish and seeing the bottom and everything steel, even steel with all that, my most important tool is my maps are my maps is, is I love looking at contour lines. I love, I learned a long time ago how to look at contour lines and how to look at a map three dimensionally. So if I see lines close together, I know it's a steep drop off. If I see lines farther apart, then I know it's more of a gradual, mm -hmm. uh, you know, descent. So when I'm looking at these things, whether it be a main lake point, a secondary point, uh, an uh, underwater hump, whatever it is, I'm looking at it three dimensionally. And when I go to, when I go fishing, I start looking at, at all these different types of structure. And when I choose what type of structure I think I should go fish, depending on what season it is and what I feel like the fish should be doing. Once I get there, then I'll start to narrow it down to cover. Like if I'm going to go fish a channel ledge, for example, uh, I'm going to start looking for a channel ledge with some brush or some rocks or something like that. And I just, I try to start compounding things before I actually decide where I'm going to fish, especially if I'm anchor fishing, but I'll also do it if I'm trolling. I try to troll. I try to start in areas like that where I can actually troll cover along with certain types of structure. Is that how you go about it? very similar um because you know i i, I and i agree because I, I don't have um live scope or anything like that on my boat I, i've got side scan which i do use a lot but my primary is also my maps especially when i'm trolling because you can you can eliminate water so easily and narrow down like once you've once you have figured out a pattern then you can start using your maps to your advantage i'll i um i really enjoy the the c map chart that uh and and as well as the navionics Platinum plus on my on my unit because i can narrow down and, and then i can color code different rank depth ranges a specific color you know if i'm if i'm targeting 25 to 35 or whatever then i might color that pink you know from it so that everything between yeah, 25 is, and 35, is that what they call shading Yes, shading. Um, and it really helps when you're trolling because, like, no matter who's on the boat, at a glance, you can tell if the boat is in the range. You know what I mean? So you're flying around there do, with 10 rods out, you know, and steering the boat. for. So at a glance, I can look at my, my, my plotter and tell, you know, where I'm at. And uh, so I, man, I use that all the time. I'm constantly yeah. changing the colors, you know, just to. So you don't keep it set on anything. You don't want a certain color to represent a certain depth range or. But now like, like danger zones I do, but like, I like you, I like to use pink for a target zone. Like, cause that's really not a color that you use for anything else. But if I'm out there and say you hit on a pattern that say, okay, these fish are all of them that's biting are in the 25 to 30 foot range. Then I'll probably color a contour and you know change all the colors or all the contours between 20 and 30 there you pink. go and that's very and smart. then then at a glance it, it's like just keep the boat in the road you know what i yeah. mean my son yeah. can do it anybody can do it you know just keep the boat in the road i'm gonna get these rods out exactly you know like I mean? if you if you take the boat off the trailer and you start marking fish at 22 feet then you can kind of mm -hmm. shade everything that's in that depth range to pink and then you know hey this is the depth range this is what i want to target whether it be right. channel bends, points, uh, ridges, whatever and it you'd is. You'd be surprised the, when, when you figure out a hump pattern or a, a depth range. stuff. I mean, things that you didn't really see would pop off the map when you change the color of a specific zone to a to a solid color. What's up, Perry Dice? What's up? Now, I tend to look at, I call structure. Um, there's Pete. Hey, yo. Stru structure, up, I tend to I look at it as like changes in the bottom contour is what I call structure. And then cover, or it could be thing like 
you know, brush, you know, old bridge pylons, you know, debris, rocks, whatever. So is there any particular type of cover that you tend to have more success over when you're, when you're trolling or even anchor fishing, like whether it be rocks, you know, brush, stumps, trees? Well, as a general rule, you don't troll through trees. <laughs> <laughs> it's costly. Well, you, you control over. I mean, now, unless you're at Russell, then I'm finding out that you have to figure out a way to pull whatever you're pulling, whether it be live or artificial, over the trees. You know, some days that's what you got to do. And it's, man, it's, it's, uh, I'm learning the hard way down there. <laughs> but up here, I mean, it ain't like that. You know, you tap, you technically, if I'm on Hickory or Road Hiss or, or even Norman, you know, there's a lot more bottom contour uh, structure than there is cover, you know, um, as far as what we're targeting 99% of the time. Yeah. You ever bump them umbrella or a rigs off the bottom, like coming over a flat? Oh yeah. I mean, if I know I can. Yeah. It's you know, a definite I mean, uh, depth indicator. Like if you're wondering how deep you're running and then you come over a, a flat or a hump or whatever, and you know, it comes up to 15 feet and, and your a rigs, uh, aren't, aren't hitting the bottom, then, you know, they're not running 15 feet. And well, I've I seen that. times where, where you couldn't get a bite unless they were stirring up sand or something on the bottom. You put it just on the bottom where it's stirring up a cloud of dirt and you, you get bit like that. You it seems like foot off the bottom. It seems like when them hybrid aren't really feeding hard, they they uh they relate to the bottom a lot. Uh, I notice a lot of party fishermen, you know, they drop it to the bottom, two cranks off. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Those guys out out in Texas that that what is it they call it? Dead sticking. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they do. They look for. It almost looks like a little little tiny piece of rip i mean you almost can't distinguish it as a fish on the bottom but they're looking for the tiniest little blip on the bottom and they'll go mm -hmm. and they'll dead stick right over top of it yeah with a thumper going or whatever with the 2d sonar right you can up. get like you can get a partial arch coming straight just right off the bottom and you know and, and scott made a good point you see a lot of guys uh, a lot especially like party fishermen or guides they'll go all the way to the bottom reel up one or two cranks and your thinking, your immediate thinking is to believe that he's doing that to for suspended fish to get the bait where the suspended fish are, but that's not the case. They're actually on the bottom and because these fish feed up. So he, he's actually just getting it right off the bottom and, he, and these fish are hugging the bottom. They're actually coming up and hitting that bait that's, not, that's only a, a real turn or two off the bottom. Well, I noticed in the summertime, you know, we've all seen the spaghetti when they're fired up, but then it just disappears. Well, they don't, they don't leave. I think they just drop down. Yeah. I believe that too. Yep. But you'll see, um, speaking of contours and talking about um, humps and stuff like that, you'll see what's called uh, high spots. And it, it won't necessarily be a hump, but hang on. I actually have an image of it right here. I'll pull it up. But it'll be, you can see where the, you have all the contour lines that are kind of close together. And then you have the ones that are kind of farther apart. And then you have this one big area in the middle where there's actually no contour lines at all. Looks like a good place to set up cut bait. Yeah, that's, yeah. that would be a flat spot on top of a hump or on top of a point. Now i got to figure out how to get this image off. There we go. Okay. <laughs> but I was, I was experimenting with some things um, here lately. And I recently found out that on google earth now i think that with the pro version i think the images may be clearer i'm not sure but for some reason my desktop isn't letting me download the the, the pro version but anyways you can actually go to google earth and then you can click on time lapse and it gives you historical satellite images of the lake whatever lake you want and uh, it's really helpful for like we have a lake around here called Moss Lake and there's no, there's no maps for it. There's, you, there's no contour lines. It's just, I got maps for it. Do you, how did yeah. you get? He updated uh, this stuff I, since 2010. 
<laughs> it's either CMAP or, or Navionics Platinum Plus. I can't remember which one I use out there, but I do okay. have to. I've got more than. I don't know why you have to do that, but y'all know. You have contour got lines more for than it? one chart to have <laughs> to have what you need for around here. But some you go back around to, here. You, you go back to that image, Jr. Like where you said that flat, like. In the springtime and early morning, like in the early morning, I'd ex I'd be pulling bait over that flat right there and expecting my bass there. And as the sun came up, them fish would drop down in them deep holes. You get you catch most of your fish coming off them flats or before them. I like also fishing um, uh, ditches and like where like let's say you have a creek uh, a creek channel, and you know how on a creek channel you have these little channels that like secondary creeks off of the creek channel mm -hmm. well yeah. that are surrounded by flats i like hitting those as well and those and those flats like i think i have an image here you can see how i, 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 drew, a, I drew an f <laughs> yeah. on each side see how there's a flat on each side and i colored in the channel there in the center right beside the island right there that that's a uh that's a creek channel. That's a secondary creek channel coming off the creek channel. And then you got a flat on both sides. You call it a blow through. Blow through? Like that's it. what we call them. And the herring spawn, they'll get in. I mean, that's fire when, like, well, we're coming out of the herring spawn now, but them little behind them little islands, some little channels that cut through. We always call them blow throughs. I don't know what they're called, but yeah, that, that would be fire at certain times of year. But I like finding areas like that, whether all kinds of stuff like that, uh, channel swings, uh, you know, bluff banks, you know, where a creek channel might might swing up against the bank. And then as it starts to swing back out, like that little gap there. Here, I have an, I have an image of what I'm talking about. See how the see how tight the contour lines right there or where the channel swings up against the bank right there. Uh -huh. Well, if you. um Here's another one. Now, here's here is uh, Navionics, and then beside of it is actual Google Earth, and you can see how this this creek channel swings up against the bank. So you have the the lines that are close together, right here. I don't know if y'all can see my mouse. Can you see it? No. Nope. Uh, okay. That'd be a good dock fish, wouldn't it, for crabs? Ex exactly. And then as the, <laughs> as that creek channel starts to swing back out, you see how the lines start to get farther apart those areas right there. And especially if it has a dock, like if, if you're crappy fishing or bass fishing or even, even pulling for stripers or hybrid, that would actually, cause a lot of your bait's going to relate. If there's any structure, if you could find a place like that and then come, then go over it with your sonar and find a school of shad or something around it, then you, there's a good chance of hitting pay dirt when you're hitting areas like that. You should throw a cast net on them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, cast uh, Yeah, there ain't no trees, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Pete? Oh, you know, it's tired. I uh didn't make my flight home because we were uh, a little delayed, so I'm stranded here for I one more. I stayed on working on your motor there. It didn't look I good. I know. I know. Oil leak. I'd automatically go home when they go to the hotel. <laughs> I, I was in Puerto Rico. I was tempted to go to the hotel room again. I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. How would, how would you like to uh, be a pilot of a plane that they just fixed a ma massive oil leak on the engine? You're good. Uh, they can, You're they good. can run. They can run without a <laughs> Hartley. Just put some slick fifty in it. You'd be good. Duct tape, you know, electrical tape, whatever. <laughs> yep. But if you can, hey, JR, those... do I have the ability to share an image here, or does yes. that have to? Well, here's here's that... what you have to. Can you? I don't know what you don't. Do you have? Do you see uh, the icons at the bottom? Do you see one that says, says present? present? Yes. Yep. Okay. Press present, and then hit okay. share screen. Okay. Be careful what you're sharing. Yeah. <laughs> easy now. No. We lied, you should, baby. You should, it should come up with a list of things that you have open. Okay. You see? You see what I'm talking about? Well, I guess I need to open what I want to share first, right? Yeah. You click on whatever it is you want to share, and then press share. 
Hey, Perry, while they're playing with it, I'm going to shoot you a text real quick. What did he say? What did you say, Pete? So while they're um, trying to fix something back there, I'm going to send Perry a text real quick. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Wrong, Perry. Shit. Damn, you know more than one, Perry? I do, actually, yeah. Man. Must be a great guy. Or a hot girl. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I got those coated pizza woman. Just kidding. Wes is hybrid fishing at an undisclosed location. And uh, he sent me a video right before the show. He, he said, hey, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to get on the show because of the signal up here. He said, but we are absolutely killing them. I think he said they've caught 20. And he said hey, they're about out of bait. But he, he sent me a little uh, one-minute clip while David is uh, getting his uh, screen share ready. I'm going to show this little one-minute clip of Wes right fast. And he just took this just a little bit ago. Pete's froze up, man. Got him. You still working on it, David? Yeah. I want y'all to look at how nice David's picture looks. I know. It looks like 4K. That's... that's no, it's just 720. How them YouTubers? They got some stuff. It sounds, sounds like he's. That's got just like my a, iPhone. I think that's his iPhone mic too, isn't it, David? Yeah. That sounds like you got a freaking Rode wireless on or something. It sounds professional. I've got one, but I'm not using it. I've got. He's probably got it hooked up to a downrigger temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm telling you, man. David is <laughs> David is the MacGyver of of striper fishermen. I've you got to be way ahead yeah. of me with all these electronic bullshit. I've I just hope the shit turns on. I've never seen someone so daggum organized. And y'all would y'all would be know, proud right? of me. I've actually been doing something the last couple of weeks that is rare for me. I've been turning my finger off my sonar off while I'm on the lake. Dang, <laughs> what do you look at? Well, I mean, when you're fishing a river where there's one direction only, you kind of don't need that, right? I was in three or four <laughs> foot of water. I'm like, you know what? What's the point? I done been through here. I know where I know what I'm looking at. So I, I take it you're a believer fish. in that sonar ping scares the fish. No, I've never been. But I mean, I you got you guys, that, you got so many like, different you know, schools of fish thought on this. I'm like, why not? Let's try whatever we can try to see if it's, you know, turn the weird. sonar finger off and turn the thumb around. Yeah, well, I know, right? It makes a lot of sense, right? Most guys, most guys well, thump and for deep water fish. You know, they're yeah, down in like fifty water. feet of water. You know, so twenty. I can foot see the shallow or, water. Or greater. I've had good success with it in twenty foot or, or greater. You have to be a lot I'm, more. I'm going to tell you what I'm a believer in. I actually, in fishing shallow water, even sometimes deeper water, depending how suspended the fish are, I'm a believer that the live well pump will spook fish. So a lot of times, I'll turn my pump off. You and Spivey would. Um, Y'all totally agree on that because anytime Spivey fishes with me, I always I don't ever take a bait tank because my my live well on my boat is so good. It's like I don't know twenty gallon at least, and it's it's pumping in fresh water constantly. I got a stand pipe in the middle, and I leave the pump on, and it's like you know you, so it's got a, it's got a little hum to it. And he if, hates if you it. don't think it makes a difference, try this one day in the summertime. Turn it on. And just jump in the water and swim around your boat. You will hear that humming underwater. And, yeah. you know, just I feel like sometimes that turns them off or spooks them or does something to them. But, and but sometimes you know, it might turn them on, too. If you're if you're using bait, 
though, you know, especially like hard to keep alive bait, like God forbid you have to use skipjack or something, or even big gizzard shad, herring even, you have to leave the bait tank running. Yeah, like, well, in my case, you know, you're fishing a tournament and you got to keep fish alive. You got to keep it running, you know, and so right. sometimes I'm tempted to turn it off and I forget about it. And now I kind of, you know, take a hit sometimes. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm a firm believer that uh, occasionally that, uh, that humming sound or moaning sound or whatever will actually shut the fish down. Perry, send me pins. <laughs> Hell, last time I did, you dogged me out. I ain't getting you no more. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, hell. When is that? This weekend. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And you haven't got to fish any? <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, you'll do good then. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Did they cut off any of that, uh, like... Not to my knowledge. I ain't heard a thing. I think the whole river's in play and everything, really. So, I what? mean. You just said it to me. Yeah. I mean, but here's the thing. Everyone I've talked to, there's been no water flow at all. So. Yeah, Tennessee's been tough. Well, we haven't yeah. had much water flow. I went to Russell the other day, and there was so much trash just sitting on top of the water. You couldn't even hardly pull boards. Uh, they had one little trickle coming out all day but not enough for even any flow. Gotcha. Yeah, that's tough. I would, uh, yeah. I, I opened up that dang laptop just the other day, and I looked at it, I'm like, holy shit, I didn't realize there was that much river. Like, yeah. I saw mom, mom marker number three, 93, 94, yeah. 95. I'm like, son of a bitch. I didn't know I, it, it, it went that far up there. I figured they would cut it off somewhere, but maybe not. Rumor yes. has it that, um, I mean, I'm not going to say who or anything, but uh, rumor has it that not a lot of boats signed up for it this weekend. Wow. Oh, probably because of the water conditions. I don't know. Maybe that or people chose not to go to Tennessee because I think it's uh, your lakes, one gets dropped or something. And so some guys fished three already and those Georgia <laughs> boys don't want to drive to Tennessee. And, you know, I didn't want to drive to Georgia or Alabama, you know, for that tournament. So. Kind of goes both ways, you know. Cherokee's a good lake, though. There'll be some fish caught. Mercer's probably been to Cherokee. You been there, Mercer? Oh, yeah. I've been it's there. a good lake for trolling, too, Peter. Yeah. JR's well, probably been to Cherokee. I ain't never been there been this there, time JR? of year. It was yeah. it was late summer, early fall when I went. And uh -huh. when the fish were still deep, and we were pulling, we were pulling those big artificial baits deep. Like nine, ten colors of lead core. Did you catch any smallmouth? <laughs> Not with a twelve inch bait. <laughs> I um, <laughs> my PB smallmouth for anything small. My PB smallmouth came from Cherokee. Or well, where would you go, Jr. On Cherokee? Yeah. Well, you mean be Mid Lake, Upper Lake? Definitely Upper Lake. If they ain't running water, I ain't so sure. I ain't so sure they wouldn't be back down. Nah. I'm the same exact way. I'm not, they're not so sure. They're not back down. Got to the... I know this. They ain't been running water on Russell the last couple of weeks, and fish ain't where, I, where let's they were. Pull up, let's pull up um, Lake Russell. I mean, not Russell. Let's pull up Lake <laughs> Cherokee. And Cherokee. Let's look at it and decide where we would fish. You might, you might need three split images. <laughs> yeah, it's a big lake. Yeah, I'd be in the highest major feeder creek on the lake, the most north. Here's Moss Lake. That's a butte. Is that a pond? It's a very <laughs> pretty much. Very, it's a very small lake. That is tiny. <laughs> But you can see that's the progression. Oh, you can you can see the whole lake in a half day easy. What's yeah. what's the uh, they got stripers in there? Hybrids, hybrids, uh, very very big hybrids. All right, let's look up Lake Cherokee. It's 
So I've already done a little bit of homework on it. I got a little areas that I want to hit, but I got two days of prefish. So, I mean, like anything else. Uh, I guess it's called Cherokee Lake then, huh? You might only have one day if they don't fix that oil leak. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's already fixed. So, you know, it's all about getting there. Oh, right, yeah. Can you guys see that? Mm, I see a bunch of green. Okay, hang on. Yeah, we might have to zoom in a little bit. All right, so here's Cherokee. This, this is the upper end of Cherokee. There's the river. You keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. No, no, not zooming in. I'm talking about keep scrolling all the way up that damn river. Yep. Yeah. So is that where you guys would go? No. <laughs> I feel like half the people will be in that little stretch right there personally, but you know. Let's see. If you come back down, it's all river, 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 river. I probably Do they have a generation schedule for that like i have not even looked i was told there is uh when I, mean, I was told the app for it but i haven't even looked wouldn't you want to wouldn't you want to troll the all those little fingers right there in that channel there? i mean i can't tell you everything right now you got viewers that are gonna be fishing that tournament you know so scroll down till you get to the main lake yeah just the top of the main lake You also have that creek right there. You could go. Yeah, what is that creek? This creek right here. Yeah. yeah, that looks good. I don't know what I don't know what the name of it is. I'll have to look on Navionics to see. How that. narrow it is going in there. Yeah, that's a pretty good pinch point right there, huh? Yeah, that's a lot of water. A lot of ways to be wrong, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, you yes. got to think. You know, uh, are we are we targeting stripers or are we targeting hybrids? Don't that don't that like have both? Yeah, you got to target stripers. Well, if you're targeting stripers, first thing in the morning, man, I'm I'm definitely trolling around all those islands. Wouldn't you think so? Zoom in at that island right there. Which one? There's like a million. Up here on the right. Top right. Yeah, right. The big one? Yeah, go down. Now zoom in. So right about where your mouse cursor is on the north end there, that's where our rental house is. Okay. Go go north, Jay. North? Yeah, drag it down. Yeah, right about there is where our rental is, somewhere right in there. I wonder how that looks like the lake was down in that picture. That's the way Cherokee is. There's a lot of exposed, like, limestone, sand, whatever that, that white-colored shoreline is. Yeah, I can't help you with that one, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> That's a toughie. I could lie to you. <laughs> That's all right. I'll I'll figure something out. Just put them clothes hangers out and hammer down, <laughs> That's brother. That's right. Put her in gear. Clothes hangers fine, out right? and hammer down. That's all we That's can do. Right. You got it. I don't know. I think look, let's let's look at it one more time. I think I would try to identify the the clearest water. No, I don't want clearest water. Okay, well then identify the dirtiest water then. I don't, I don't like the stretches of river that are just like straight stretches of river. Like I would eliminate anything that didn't have some kind of creek mouth in the river or some kind yeah. of secondary creek. Some kind of bend there. or something. Yeah, exactly. It looks like the clearest water is going to be See. I don't think you can even consider what the clearest water is on your damn image right there because it's going to change with the rainfall and all, flow and all that. So, 
Well, you can go to um, historical. Your clearest water is going to be probably way down lake. Yes, of, no. course, of, of course, but you're not going to be down there. Where everybody knows you're not going to be fishing down there. So, if I you mean, come you all never the, know. If I were you, it looks like the clearest water is that big area right around uh, Macedonia Church. Macedonia Church. Macedonia Church. Where the hell are you? You on you on Murray? Do you guys think that Macedonia Church? Is, you think there's only one on Lake Murray, and that's it? That's what I thought. No, nah, no. Nah, there's Mas- there's a Macedonia Church in Kings Mountain, Gastonia, like literally every Damn, that's county in every county, every city all across the United States. There's well, a hell yeah, fish that Church. Pete. Macedonia Church is always good. <laughs> Damn. Go to Macedonia Church, Pete. Can't go wrong. Is David? Did he ever figure out how to share the screen? Yeah. I was just waiting. All right, right. All right, fire it up, baby. He's got like three computers running. He's on the keyboard over here. How many screens do you got? Just two. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still doing it. And I, it says Chrome has lost permission to capture your screen to fix it. I, I think I'd have to close down Chrome and come back. Oh, Lord, he's having technical difficulties. Uh-oh. If yeah. you think that'll fix it, then... Then go ahead, bud. We'll be here. All right. Big right. Okay. So, Pete, you in Puerto Rico right now? Uh, no, I am in Philadelphia right now. I thought I seen a roach crawling back there. Yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I Whatever. saw Bruce Springsteen back there. <laughs> Rocky Balboa, what? <laughs> hey, what's uh, that street in Philly where all the people are on fentanyl and they're like zombies? Did you see that? I did not know. I mean, that's every downtown practically in America right now. I mean, these people be standing up, like bent over at the waist. I don't know. I, I don't really go exploring Philly because, you know, I go in, I might not come out. <laughs> <laughs> Get a cheesesteak. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So what are you guys' favorite type of structure? Not cover, but, you know, bottom contour structure. Like, my, I love to see um, a channel being right where, where a creek mouth is it's been like the time of year okay we're well, right now springtime i love my humps i love yeah. hump fishing you like the humps yeah i like I, multiple humps like, like right. a full-blown hump like you know uh 30 foot of water surrounded like, by 50 plus feet of water like 50 coming up to 20 okay so that uh, screenshot you showed earlier, that little meandering creek with that dock. <clears throat> yeah. I bet you missed that damn hump that was in that damn image right there. Because I would have gone straight that damn hump and not the channel edge. <laughs> Let's see. Not that one. That one right there. Yep. See a hump right there, dead center? Let's see. You talking about? Go back. Was, was I back on it? Images? Yeah, that one right there. That one, there, that one right there. 29 too. foot. Below, see that below big the hump 29. right there in the middle? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the hump right there in the middle, yeah. <clears throat> That's where I'd be fishing. That's uh, the hump's not twenty nine feet. That that particular contour line adjacent to the hump is twenty nine feet. The hump shallow. Yeah. But anyways, that's what I like. <laughs> the hump. I like. There's, there's uh, another image of a screenshot from Navionics there on my phone of a hump. I like what, I don't know, it's like multiple humps and ditches, like small, all in the same area where you have yeah. multiple ditches, multiple humps, man, it, it always seems to hold fish. Hey, JR, pull up Lake Watery. I'm going to teach you all a little something here not a lot of folks know about. Cause they yeah, don't really yeah about I'll be at Watery next week if I learn this. Okay. Hey, shit, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> pull up Lake Watery and go all the way to the lower dam. Okay. I'm on it. I'm on. Show us your favorite spot on water, EP. I wouldn't say it's my favorite spot, but this is where I smoked them last winter and no damn boats were near me most of the time. Hell yeah, I'm writing this down. Do it. Okay. Are we, can you see it? Are we on there? Yep. All right. All right. You said go to the. Go all the way to the lower dam and let me see the. Um, so you zoom in as close as you can. And let's see the contour lines there. Oh Lord, I can't. <laughs> hang, hang on, I, I'm on. I'm on Earth. Let, let me go to Navionics here. Hang on. Yeah. 
Looks like a shithole to me from here. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it about is. It looks dirty as Greenwood. Shoot, that's good right there, that picture. Okay. Will it turn your gold green? It will turn your boat brown. <laughs> you have a scum line from a hell on the side after a day's fishing there. What's watery known for? Hybrid? Smelling like shit. Striper. <laughs> Striper? It's, it's known for numbers, yeah. You can go out there and just catch 100 fish in a day sometimes. Okay. All right, I got it. Hang on. Stop screen. Share screen. Harry's gone. Oh, no, Mercer's gone. Damn, I look like Mercer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little. No. All right. Now, that, can you, uh, can uh, you, can you see we, this, guys? Yep. Okay. All right. I'm zooming in, Pete. Zoom in. Zoom in more. Much more. Much more. Much more. All right. Look at all those damn humps on the south end there. Oh. Go, go all the way up. Just keep on going a little bit. Go up. Hang on. Hang north. on. Let, me, let me add Mercer back. Okay. I'm coming. All right. Hang on. Okay. Go up, you said? Yeah. So, so you see right there the, the oh, yeah. hump right there? Wow. And yeah, keep on so going nice. up a little more. See all those damn humps right there in that bank? Yeah, it looks like Murray on the yeah. lower rim. And keep on going up a little more. That bank is just in nothing but series of humps. Yeah. And I just sure trolled is. one end to the other. Just kept on right about where that point is, right there above the island. That's about where the humps kind of sort of stop, that series. Hey, and you know I, what? You know what? I used I'll, to go uh, really the only good – what they call jump fishing, you know, when they're schooling, not, not when they're subsurface, like a lot of people will say they were, they were busting on top. No, they weren't like a lot because they'll, they'll see their tails. They'll see them rolling the blah, blah, blah. Those, those fish are feeding subsurface. I'm talking about actually busting the top, like literally on the top when it's time to throw a damn spook and catch the crap out of them. I've seen that like nowhere, nowhere, nowhere else has ever been as good as Lake watery when it comes to that. And what I did was I came down here to the dam and you look out, you look up through here and they, you'll see them come up with, but you'll have your binoculars and you'll just be looking and you'll see them come up in a big school, like a football size school. And I bet you they were coming up on these humps. Yeah. Right I know. On top of them. Back in Hartwell, hey, well, I say heyday, 12 years ago, Memorial Day weekend, we were down at Hartwell on the lower end. Where you shouldn't be Memorial Day, yeah. And we, I swear, it was five acres, and it was white water. I mean, they were busting. It looked like a hot tub out there, and where it had did, to be uh, five acres. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Scott. Where did uh Pete go? He turned his light off. He turned his light. He turned his light. That's Wes. Actually, Wes is trying to come in. Hey, so I'm trying to share this now, and I can see it. I'm sharing it. There it is. Okay. There we go. Oh, well, that's way fancy than there. I did it. For some reason, uh, David, it was down here, and it said um, add to. But yeah, I got it on there. That is uh, that's C map. That is absolutely no. That's actually nav. That's my Navionics Platinum Plus. That's the Navionics. But that's Platinum kind of the. Plus. I like the shading because look how it, it, those underwater. Uh, yeah, I call them underwater creeks, but I mean, like, damn, all, all creeks are underwater. Wow, the the underwater thoroughfares and 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 blowouts or whatever Scott called them. But I mean, that's the way it really makes them pop off the screen and humps it and everything. Does I mean, it's, it's like it's it's three dimensional? Yeah. What lake is that? That's Norman there. Norman. Yeah, that's trying awesome. to come in. Can you zoom Channel in on that? And humps. Or you can't because it's a picture. That's just a picture there, a screenshot. Yeah, that's nice. I need to update my stuff. <laughs> that's I know, plus. right? Let me know. I'm a dealer. I can get you a deal. <laughs> hey, Navionics works on anything now, right? It will, yeah. Uh -huh. Now, what but is the – you said the difference is uh, just color shading when it comes to C-maps versus Navionics? Well – 
Now, CMAP gives you a little bit more control over the colors. I, I do like it better. Navionics don't, but some places like like uh, Road Hiss doesn't even have a chart for, or CMAP doesn't have a chart for Road Hiss. So I have to buy, have to have both. Um, I'm going to let Scott come back before I say what I'm about to say. All right. You know what I like? I like, see, I got I got an HDS when they very first came out back in 2007, 2008, whenever it was. Oh, die. Yeah. yeah the, the, I got so used to Navionics. When I'm looking at contours and I'm looking at depths, like if, the, for example, the, the main river channel is white because it's the deepest. You got different, different shades of blue. You have a darker shade of blue the more shallow you get. Yep. That's the way I like to read a map. Well, when I get on Alan's boat, he's got a freaking hummingbird and he's got <laughs> like 20 different freaking colors. You got yellow, red, green. You got, I'm like, what the hell is it? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm looking at. Like what <laughs> happened to the old, the lighter it is, the more, sh the deeper it is. And the darker, the blue, the more, the, the more shallow. Am I the only one that likes that? No, I love it. I got, I got my same Navionics car that I got in 2010 and I just moved it over to my Simrad because I'm just so used to it. Exactly. And the so, damn, and you still got there. that. As long as I can get this, this, this awesome image that we're looking at now, if I can get that, but I can still keep my, my where my dark heard. blue is shallow. That is just my, a layer. That shading there is just a layer, and you can make that as transparent. Like I can slide the slider and and make the colors disappear, and it'll go back to the white with just nothing but contour lines. Or you can make that color as vivid as you want. You can blend See, the two. Like if you if you want the the contour lines to pop even harder, you know, you can. I mean, you got full control to make it. Look I think this. Want. I think this is really great for trollers mm -hmm. but <clears throat> for being a live baiter like i don't use i wouldn't use it as much like i wouldn't use it enough to spend the money on i don't think but like, I, I could see, see if that. i was trolling and i wanted to troll 20 foot ledges and i just color it 20 foot and just yeah that would be great i'm old school like team new school but i'm opposite that's that's actually why I named myself Team New School is because I'm old school. It's just an oxymoron. But all the like Wes will call me asking me these questions because you know I did YouTube, so people think I know computers, which I don't. And I fish, so they think I know graphs, which I don't. I'm, I use it very little. I'm the same exact way. See, I don't. You know, you guys have patience for these dang gopros and shit i don't that's why i don't do no videos whatsoever i can't tell you how many times i tried and like i tried to turn a damn camera on and I, I miss or lose a damn fish so after about the fourth I turn time, it I'm on like, Fuck it. first thing in the morning and i don't turn it off till i leave that's... i use a gopro 360 so it's recording 360 degrees around the camera it's powered by a usb cord on the boat mm -hmm. see i gotta i gotta worry about it I gotta. I, see, like I gotta fish. start doing that. I don't want to worry about cameras while I'm out there. You know. I gotta I start like, doing it. It's cool to not miss, even if it's something that I'm not going to make a video on. It's just memories and things. Me and my son that I don't have that I don't worry about missing. You know. It's so just, how do you do that, recording. David? How are you putting on like? Is it a loop? Is it like a loop mode? No, no. It's a 500. So I use a 512 gigabyte SD card on my GoPro 360, and I'm using. Um, and I'm just powering it off a of USB instead of a battery. So once right. I start it, you know, it's powered off of a USB. I now, I, I've heard of guys leaving them running so they could capture what they want to cap. But once they capture what they want to capture, now, then they can go press the button and it will save it. Otherwise, it's going to keep recording over it. Well, when <laughs> when I first See, started, I don't use that mode. I mean, I know what you're talking about, and that that's cool. But you still got to remember to start and stop it and all that bull crap. And I don't want to deal with that. I just want to. I just want it recording. When I started, I had a Hero Three with the big flat batteries, and I carried yeah. five batteries with me, and I'd set that thing up on a tripod. And it would be yeah. beep, beep, beep when it got low and I'd switch batteries and I would do the same thing. And then when I got home, 
It would take me about an hour to edit it though, because I'd have to scrub. That's what that, that was my next question for David is. Are you filling up that 512 gig? Is that like an eight-hour trip? No, I like can record 11 that? hours. So you can record 11, 11, hours, 11 hours on 11 hours. a 512 This is my gigabyte. 360 camera, and I've just got it on a, a roll bar mount or whatever type yeah, deal. Mount. And I, both, yeah. I, I just hang it from my center console right in the center, just under the rod holders at the back. Yeah. And it's, it's slightly above my head, so it's not in the way. Um, so how do you get that 360 uh, video? Now that's the like, now that's the that's the bitch. <laughs> you got. I, I don't I don't think my editor can handle. I mean, like because the I'm GoPro just app one, you do so you re, that's that's what you call reframing. So you open up each. You know, it takes a while. You so got to go do through it and you got to through the GoPro app. You have to do it through yes. this. And you go you get well. It's a soft. It's a um, app application on on your computer or Mac, whatever you're going to use. It's free. But you got to go through there and you select the frame and you, you can you zoom around in a 360 degree world and you you, you put in keyframes. So, you know, I, I might start out looking at this point and then you, you can choose whether you want it to move the camera view linearly or or, or an S curve. So and, and if I wanted to edit on PowerDirector, could I use that GoPro software to get the angles that yeah. I wanted? And then save it, and yeah. then move that to Power Direct. Absolutely, yeah. Your final edit can be done on whatever you want. It's just going to be an MP4 file after that. Okay. You're just converting it from a 360 file to an MP4. Okay. So that Go, I didn't even know they had a GoPro 360. Is that a? How about the Insta 360? Is that like way better than the Insta 360? That's what the I Insta have. Three, Insta 360 does not record continuous. You're going to lose a little short segment of video in between each um, file. Whereas the GoPro, it still segments the videos, but there's no loss in between each file. Like I think there's 30 seconds loss or something like that on the go on the Insta 360 between each. I have that, the Insta I mean, 360, what if that's, and I, but I don't use yeah. the 360 option. I just use a sta the standard option i need to start using that 360 well i now. see the new yeah. one they got the go to or whatever it's like really tiny and they got a magnet you can like stick it to your chest mm -hmm. yeah you put the chain around your neck under your shirt and you stick it to your chest and i, I yeah, thought I've it, seen that to you. i thought it was really cool for how small it was but i didn't know what the disadvantages yeah. of it was there's the man well, i just plop this on and hit hit record and then on Sunday afternoons or a little bit every every day through the week, I go go back and reframe. I don't do the whole. So what I do is I make sure I take a picture of a fish or any special moment that happens on the lake, and then now I've got a timestamp for, and I can go back and find the clip that was three or four minutes in front of yeah. that moment, and then that's the only clip I'm reframing. I'm not re reframing it all eleven out. hours to find something. You yeah. yeah, I remember me and Sumo were I was recording every the whole trip and we had a pizza and it was we were double anchored on Clark's Hill in a tournament and we stuck the pizza box up on the T top and the wind started blowing and you see the pizza box flying and the pizza I was like one of my favorite clips. I wouldn't have got that if I was just recording. Right. That. Yeah. <laughs> Wes, well, you in the truck driving, bud? I am. We just got off the water about an hour ago. Uh, man, listen, we were putting a boat out. The boat pulled in front of us. Didn't have a motor on. You know, they used a trolling motor. And we sat there, and I sat there, and I sat there, and then they finally, bless his heart, it was an old gentleman in a wheelchair. Um, oh, man, they like they never got that poor guy out of the boat. He should have cussed his him. ass out. Then he said, <laughs> I, heard him say, I, I forgot that kid's name. He said, Hurry up and get my fat ass out of here so these guys can get their boat out of here. <laughs> Damn. People struggling, but you got to do what you got to do, I guess. There's a oh, lucky, you, lucky you got JR, Wes. If you're ever in a wheelchair, he can take you because my ass ain't taking. You wouldn't take me fishing in a wheelchair? <laughs> Damn. A friend of mine at work, his you dad played, played basketball uh, for the Carolina Tar Wheels. He was in a wheelchair, and the name of their team was the Carolina Tar Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> what was that name again? 
He was oh, like, yeah, that shit ain't funny, man. That shit funny. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Very funny. That's funny. I don't give a fuck who you are. Damn. So who's got the best mapping? It ain't Garmin. Yes, it is. By a long <laughs> shot. Hey, Garmin's so good, they bought Lorenz's shit to try to upgrade it. They bought it because it was better. Nope, they bought it to try to fix it, make it better. <laughs> we done seen some shit Mercy put on. You ain't got nothing near like that on your shit, Wes. This shit's got pictures of fish on the humps. Oh, I got pictures of fish on humps. No, it's on, the, on, the, on the mapping. It oh, shows I, fish I, on the I map. got it. Oh, no, nah, that's way above my pay grade. <laughs> they do have, actually, uh, one of the layers you can turn on is is a sonar-based layer, so you can kind of see bottom density and bottom hardness. You know, if that, that's more for bass fishermen who are really concentrating on trying to find a specific bottom, you know. I mean, it might pay dividends if you're looking for something to, to cut bait on, though. I don't know what you're what – So what draft do you run, David? It's, it's, a Simrad. Oh, you're talking about gets uh, Garmin calls that. Rant, you know? <laughs> we call that Garmin in Garmin industry. We call that relief shading. <laughs> yeah, that's same thing. Same yeah, thing. It's, it's I've got, got that on my. I've got that on my offshore boat, and dude, that's amazing. When you get out, I was trying to show Scott a little bit of it the other day. When you get out there on that ledge, and you can actually see the drop off. You can actually see the ledge where it drops off, and every little rock. And cut and nook in it. I, I love that relief shading. That's the shit, especially yeah. for offshore. I shared my screen a little bit ago, but yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's a cool shot. Get all the pictures to me. Get a man. You get anything to eat, you? We'll get something. Yeah, we can get something. What was that? Uh, what kind of drone was that? The DJI Air 2S. That was a lot man, better that, than the, my drone. That follow <laughs> mode is amazing, dude. Like, I, 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 wasn't, I was just curious how it did, man. I, I put it on follow. We took off up the river, I mean, 25, 30 mile an hour, and it just it stay right there following the boat. Whatever you, whatever object you highlight is going to follow. Then I could just still, I could still manipulate the sticks though and make it swing out around the boat or whatever I wanted oh, yeah. to do while all while it's staying locked on. How it's, did it's it, amazing. It, it? Could you okay. land it all right? No, that's a little sketchy. <laughs> I was going to say that's sketchy for her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'd have stopped the boat, I, it would have been made more sense. But, but I mean, I've done it two or three times. You know, I just. I'd hover down in front of myself, like get it out there near my trolling motor, get it down about eye level, and then I'd let off the stick and let it come to me, and I'd just reach up and grab it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when you grabbed it, was it going? <laughs> nah, I mean, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, uh, JR's got follow though. mode, too. It follows the damn trees. It'll go right into the damn trees. <laughs> well, yeah. But, you know, if you ever yeah, lose it. You, you can. Hey, didn't y'all have? Didn't y'all have to get out of the boat and get Jr's out of the woods? Y'all did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have, we we lost my draw. I lost track. I was like, dang, where's it at? And I couldn't see what. And it ended up going off in the trees. And no, I tell the truth, Jr. You said drive towards it, and I said, where the hell is it? We lost track of it. <laughs> we lost track of it. It went in the trees, and I was like, okay, well, it's gone, you know. And we were getting ready to like, you know, forget it, forget about it. And then I happened to look, and it said GPS on there, and I clicked on it, and it actually gave me like a beacon, like it was like showing me on the screen where my drone was, and I was like, "Oh, was well, it still flying, or was, did it crash?" No, it was crashed. It was crashed <laughs> in the woods. So we went to the shoreline, and we kept following where the where the the GPS was was beeping, and flashing, and Scott let me off, and and I went up there, and and, and it took me right to it. So if you ever crash it, you know, don't give up. It, it, sh it shows you where it's at. Yeah. Hey, Junior. There's an insurance you can get for them, too, or something or other. 
probably wouldn't. You crash in the water, though, you're shit out of luck. I can't believe JR ain't crashed his in the damn water. Hey, JR. I'm, I'm thinking about getting, they make I, some little floating, uh, these little balls that go on each, all four, to all of the legs. That way, if you ever did have to set it down or battery went stupid or something, it, it ain't going to sink. At least you, you get your get SD card back. with that refresh program as long as you have the drone, you know, <clears throat> for like hey, Junior. bucks or something. Yes, sir. Hey, did you did you get that video? Yes, I already played it. <laughs> play it for me. Play it for me before we, before I lose signal. I didn't watch all of it. Okay. I don't know if I can see it on the phone or not. It wasn't that good. Got him. I don't think he's big as yours. Unless he just ain't got excited yet. Wes, what kind of bait you pulling, bud? You're on mute. You mute you muted yourself. Big herring. Big herring. So you're pulling the yeah. river herring for these yeah. for these hybrids. No, 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 not river herring, but they're pretty big pretty pretty big blue backs. Okay. Oh, hell, wait a minute. That ain't the video I wanted to send you, Junior. I sent you the wrong one. I wanted to send you one. Man, we had three fish on. I was videoing Richie, yeah. and a rod went off, and I turned around to grab it, and then another rod went off. Ah. Oh. But anyway, you'll have that. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, hey, it's been a good show, Wes. Yeah. Appreciate Still got seven minutes. Guys have me. Well, we still got seven minutes. We'll we'll use up these. I got you some backup tonight, Junior. I called David. Called me earlier, and then I asked Scott, "Would y'all get with with, with y'all? Somebody get on there and help you tonight, so you wouldn't be by yourself." Where's little Pete at? I think Pete had um, signal issues. He was on here for most of the show, but he blacked out a couple of times, and he didn't come back this last time. Well, folks, he had a foreign country somewhere. Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> Damn. All right, guys. So where are we going fishing next? Um, you don't have to you don't have to say where, but are you going fishing? Uh Scott, David, Wes. Going somewhere Saturday. I ain't made my mind up yet. Yeah, I'm going Sunday in the rain. You I'm can't about get Scott. going to road hiss if they'll run some freaking water, man. That's where I was thinking about going. Yeah, uh, the trout, none of these lakes, none of them are running water. The lower party. I got some trout and some shad left from Saturday, so I'm thinking about taking them up the road hiss. Hey, hey, Richie, hold on, Richie wants Might to tell y'all where he's going to go. And get, no, get, tell I mean, Richie. the catfish lake and get a little bit more, get a few herring to take up there with me, too. Richie, tell them where you're going to go fishing at. Tell them. <laughs> Lord Hardy pay punt. <laughs> what did he say? Y'all hear him? He said he's going to Laurel and Hardy pay punt up in Traveler's Rest. <laughs> <laughs> or Marietta, wherever it is. I'm going to go sleep on Wes's boats up there and doing nothing. You know what we did not do tonight? <laughs> we did not look at the comments. Do we got comments? Yes, we do. We Wes, can. when are you going back to the know. saltwater? I was going to go well, next there they week. Are. I don't know what the weather's looking like. <clears throat> I know we're going down Memorial Day for four or five days, I think. so. Got to have that window. <laughs> got to have that window. <laughs> Sorry for... You know, uh, but, but you know, I, 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 got some, I got some things lined up. I'm really not going to talk about it right now. <laughs> but, you know, if that window, but if we get that window just right... <laughs> um, we might can make it happen, but you know how that goes. It's just we got to get that, that that window right there. But I don't I don't really want to talk about what I got going on right now. You got some um, secret bait. Yeah, yeah, I got some good stuff going on. You know the way I'm tying my lures and how many things I'm running on my Alabama rigs, <laughs> and um, I just you know. But if that window falls right, um, you know maybe <laughs> we can make it happen. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm just going to touch on these comments really fast. What's up, uh, Mike Hunter? What's up, Lacey? James Long said the largemouth are on fire on that Texas rig and buzzbait. Junior Warscow said he's on Lake Wiley right now as we speak. Uh, let's see. Dustin Fisher said going to be nasty. Supposed to rain like hell Thursday and Friday. 
He yeah. said he would definitely go mid lake on Cherokee, ten out of ten. Uh-huh. He said, uh, he said it's uh, the lake is still down a decent amount. Richard Skirp said Panther Creek is on fire on Cherokee right now. Uh, good evening. Let's see. Caught eight fish uh, on that lake on a fly rod. Crappy and stripers are crazy there as well. I assume he's talking about uh, Cherokee. Um, let's see. Do hummingbird have that kind of equipment? Uh, probably not. They're shitty. They're the trailer park of graphs. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Peter Malik said, I like to spend more time fishing than worrying about my drone slash cameras. Uh, you're just a hater. Uh, <laughs> Philip Callahan yeah. said, rode his suck last Saturday. Yeah. It's cause they weren't running water and you probably didn't know what you were doing. Brady <laughs> Milford said, just try just tuning in. Y'all come up to Cherokee reservoir, Tennessee this weekend. Heck of a fishery. No shit, dumbass. Ch- Chad Hustetler said, what's up, fellas? What's up, Chad? Uh, and Facebook user said, LOL. And Skinner just come on and said, evening, boys. He's evening. Drinking coffee. You need to get Skinner on this show. He's, he'd be good. He would be He'd be very good. He'd be I good. Like huh? Skinner. Yeah, yeah. Well, he'll have to He'll have to come on one night. I'm sure he will. I'm oh, sure yeah. He'd he come on. He'd be more entertaining than me. My damn Uncle Fester. I think that you guys would probably compliment each other. It would be good to have you both on. All right, Wes. Well, you drive safely, my friend. And uh, see, there you go. We got two fucking minutes left. I'll tell you what. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to let you sign us out. How's that sound? Hey, well, I'll tell you what. Let me ask you a question. What promoted you and Scott last year after we got off the show? What promoted you and Scott? to go to YouTube and talk to each other online on YouTube for three hours. <laughs> Bourbon. And we were both <laughs> off work. Oh, okay. We, neither of us had to work the next day and we were on that bourbon. That's rare. So we got to take advantage of it. So Mercer, oh. you go, are you going back to Russell? Yeah. I don't know if I'll go. I ain't, I ain't a hundred percent sure. Sad. Probably. I'll probably will. I mean, I- you know, they hopefully we get all this rain and Tennessee will get better and we'll get better and they'll start running some water. I mean, I ain't gonna quit going. I mean, my I'm I'm in it I'm in it now, so I'm scared not to go because the the time I don't go will be when it was <laughs> when I should have gone. See, David, <laughs> David, David Mercer's like Pete. You know, he's got that window. You know, you just gotta have that window. And if you oh, get that window, pretty, David's window's pretty big. It seems like. Yeah, oh, I go every time I freaking can, man. Right here, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I can't through the week. That's my biggest problem is I have to work, you know. But yeah, I'm, yeah, David, you know, my days, but I'm going on Saturday, you know. So I mean, it is what it is, you know. Hey, do y'all ever? And, and this is a question for all three of y'all. I know Scott has here, here and there a little bit, but do you ever get? Do you ever think you're gonna get burnt out on it, or you just? Cause I kind of got burnt out on Tennessee and the fact that I wasn't catching no fucking fish. But, uh, <laughs> you know, like now, believe it or not, man, I'm enjoying this little boat that I got catching these hybrid. I'm enjoying this as much as I have any done any kind of fishing. I met. You we know went why? up here and reach you in a pair today, and we caught I, – I know we caught 20. You know, you know why? I mean, why? Because it's freaking awesome, dude. I just – I think – That's why. I think, I so think you, you get burned out on – Doing the same lose track thing. of what's important. I mean, what's yeah. cool is catching stripers. It doesn't matter what size they are. They all have their own culture. They all have their own aura. It's, it's fun. It's fun. The whole just, culture is fun. I think switching up boats, switching up locations helps yeah. a lot. All right. Well, listen, guys. I, think it's I have important a to manage manage your expectations. You know, if I'm if I'm fishing Russell, then I know I might go down there and not catch anything, or I might catch one, and that's a good day. You know. Yeah. If, but if I'm fishing Norman or somewhere, then that ain't a good day at all. You know? I have a tournament on Lake James this weekend. Where where should I fish? The James River? No, Lake James. <laughs> what kind of tournament? Lake James is the very first lake on the Catawba chain. It's the cleanest, the clearest, the, it's very mountainous. You got musky and small mouth and large mouth and there's no hey, 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 I hate to interrupt y'all, but listen, we missed a big walleye. I did not know walleye was up there. We watched that motherfucker. I thought it was a gar at first, and he hit that heron and cut his ass in half, and he missed that hook by like a half an inch. Mm. 
Is that the fish you were talking about that's good to eat, Scott? Yeah, they're up there. They yeah, that's that's where eat. most people target them up in that area. Well, we missed one today. They like to be on the bottom. A lot of them guys bounce bottom rigs for them. When we went up there today, I mean, I I knew we'd catch. I figured we'd catch a few fish, but I think we caught over twenty hybrid, and there were some of them four and five pounds. I mean, and on light tackle, that's just that's awesome. That is just awesome. And hell, we had. I think we lost we lost one we lost a nice fish right at the boat, and then we had one pop a leader. Um, I mean, I think we lost what Richie three or four. We lost three or four fish. I mean, it was a great day. We run out of bait. Should have had circle. What hooks. size hooks were you using for hybrid? I had there? circle hooks. Yeah. Uh, I had some one alts and two alts, depending on the hair. And I had right. three rods with two alt hooks and three rods with one alt. Here's and the I deal. was using circle hooks, and I was here's, using circle hooks. Here's the deal. You never use circle hooks with boards, planer boards, bobbers, <laughs> any of that. Use trebles. You, seriously, use trebles. The circle hooks are not going to work on your planer board. That's yeah, they, they, don't never, work. they don't work, Wes. I haven't won no right. tournaments with circle hooks on planer boards. Zero. I know, right? Zero. Listen to JR, the bass fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> you got kale hooks with rubber I've every fish ahead. I've ever missed. I swear to God, striper fishing on a planer board has been because of a freaking circle hook. You switch to a number four treble, you will you'll quit missing those fish. A treble, Jesus Christ! I mean, you know, I get it. You're trophy fishing. You don't want them to swallow it and all that jazz, but. No, dude, that's not. The circle hook, the fish, the, the circle hook is designed for the fish to swallow it. It comes back. Yeah, so your planer board is light, and it pulls the planer board until it gets tension. It Perfect. Fills that, it fills that tension Perfect. before it can I swallow I think if you missed the fish, the, the, the gap in the your hook size was too small. All I run is one okay. out on herring. I don't care what herring. Y'all keep using your circle hooks on your boards. Oh, okay. Don't make me go get my trophies. Damn, Scott, don't do it. Don't Tell do me it, about the good old days. <laughs> oh, I can do it still, Jerry. Yeah. I don't so, know, Scott. So let's get this straight. I only use circle hooks if I'm downlining or freelining and use J hooks on planter boards. Uh, 100%, yeah. Yeah, and then, you could, you, then you could catch bass like JR. Put a worm hook on there. Okay, well, explain something to me. Seriously, not being a smart ass, I want to know this. Okay. Carolina, I why, why can't I catch them on a down line, but I can't catch them on a planter board with a circle hook? Because the fish has to be able – you know, why do they make rods so limber for striper? They don't. Well, he's got plenty of time to build up on a planter board, don't he? The ugly yeah. stick striper want, rod's not limber. You don't want a stiff rod with a circle hook. You don't want – when that when that fish grabs – if it's a J hook, Yes. Fish is going to grab it. It doesn't matter if it feels tension or not. Bam! It's hooked. It turned. It turns its head to swim away. It's hooked regardless. When it when it when it comes to a circle hook, it's going to grab that bait, and that hook's in its mouth. When that fish turns, that you need that you need that rod to be able to bend as that fish is taking that bait. It can't feel the bait initially. It's got to get the bait all the way in its mouth before it feels it. That's why I use limber rods. And that's how circle hooks work. The fish actually eats the bait, turns, it pulls it, actually pulls it up out of its gullet and gets it in the quarter of the mouth. It's money. That's, that's why you will not lose a fish on a limber rod when it with a circle hook. They're money. You never lose, you never lose a fish on a down rod using circle hooks if your rods are limber. If you're using a stiff rod, it will, you will. A graphite rod, you'll lose. So them what all is the your time. theory, Junior? I don't agree with it, but what is your theory as to why you uh, uh, uh a circle hook doesn't work with planer board. I I, I think I know why. That's what I'm asking with it, but I, I want to hear it, what you say. Because it's like using a bobber. It's the same. All a planer board is is a bobber. That's it. That's right. all it is. Or are you when saying this grabs it? it yes, it feels, it, it feels resistance immediately. That's why it doesn't work. That's why. Hey, you sounded like you're a fan of the yeah. clear boards. No, I'm, I'm just. A, I'm a fan of common sense. What I'm saying because is you can't pull, pull a heavy metal <laughs> It doesn't get any more simple, guys. It doesn't get any more simple. It's 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 100 common sense. It makes right. absolute perfect no, sense. You could achieve the same thing then if your release was re released to. I mean, is your is your release not Releasing soon enough? 
Like, Lord, no. The Who's released, about the released this suit enough? The clip, no, yeah. Absolutely the not. Clip. No, it's no, it's not. I mean, is that why you're having problems? I'm just, I'm just asking. So, J.R., are, are, you, are you pulling herring with noodle boards? I don't understand the tension. Hey, Mercer, I've, seen videos, you, I've seen videos of you. I've seen videos of you missing fish. When water get hit. Mercer, I've seen videos right. of you missing fish. That's probably why, that's probably why you missed them. Wes, no, he, we've misfished, uh, and every one of them was I'm always on a planter board. Scott Perry's missed a million of them on a planter board. Don't let him bullshit you. Everybody that's missing fish out here, every one of them, everybody that's missing yeah. fish out here is missing them on planter boards because they're using circle hooks. The only fish you miss is one that's not hungry. Jr. Jr. You know I don't use circle hooks. You, I, you know uh, I don't. You just told us you used what you use today. No, but not on my planer boards. That's what we had on the other day. What did you use today, Wes? Because you, you literally just said you used circle hooks today. <laughs> Shut up, Scott. I'm trying to get out of this. <laughs> God damn. Don't rob a bait with Scott Perry. God damn, he'll call the police on you. But damn. <clears throat> damn. If you're using planer no, bobbers, I did, planer I did have circle hooks on today. Honestly, when I Noodles. went to the bait shop the other day, they didn't have he didn't have no one alt or two alt J hooks, so I had to get the circle hooks. So that's all I could get. Go look at your like your your pool noodle guys that are out here like uh meat pool fish noodle before. guys. That's totally trot, different. Trot, pool line, noodles. trot lines and pool noodles. They just got they don't use circle hooks. That's because there's just, no reason. Because all the resistance, they can't, they can't, they don't work. That's not. There's how no resistance to work. the board. Why do you? Why do you have to have a noodle rod for a circle hook? Answer. Yeah, are you trying to convince me? I've been using circle hooks for fifteen fucking years on planer boards. Yeah, and you've missed a lot of fish too. I would have missed them on kale hooks. Nah. If they wouldn't. hungry, they eat. Nah, you wouldn't have missed them, bud. All right. Damn. Tell them, Pete. Stop using circle hooks on boards. Oh, my God. It's like getting lessons from fucking boards. What the hell is that? Is Pete, Pete, Pete Malik back on here? Yeah, he done got his Philly cheesesteak. He's back. <laughs> That's All right. right. Put your money where and your I mouth get is, in the process. Well, put your money where your mouth is, all I can say. What do you want to do? I got fifty oh. bucks in my bank in my checking account. We can all fifty meet. bucks for we me to drive to meet. North Carolina. We can. It ain't about the money, anyways, <laughs> and you know it ain't about the money. I don't we, have we, to we, prove we, nothing to you, Jerry. I've have... proved it to myself for fifteen years. Well, Damn. Then I don't have to make disagree. you believe me because well, I already know just, the facts. Then why are you disagreeing? Because, because someone wrong. disagrees because they have something to prove. It's You're disagreeing wrong. with. Why are you disagreeing? I don't with want me? you to so spread misinformation. <laughs> not spreading misinformation. <laughs> you sound like one of them damn <laughs> Biden no. supporters. No, I, I it's just the I know how circle hook works. I learned something yesterday. How circle hooks work. All this, I, hey, I do. All this time, Jr. spinning on a damn kayak in the river in Lake Wiley, doing this and that. He should have been fishing off the damn boat ramp the whole time for a catfish. <laughs> Yeah, y'all leave my buddy Jr. alone now. <laughs> Jr. is coming out aggressive with us. No, yeah, he's just trying to give y'all some knowledge, and y'all don't want to listen. I don't need it. <laughs> How that sound? Hey, Pete. Kind of good. Pete. Yo. So, did you find that window to get offshore last week? Nope. Listen, I've used circles Damn. with boards for, for over a decade. I know. I, you can definitely catch fish on boards for using circle hooks, guys. Yeah, okay? you're being a dumbass I know, for a decade. I know that you can use circle hooks on boards <laughs> to catch fish. I know that. But next time you miss a fish, look but and you, see what look and but, see what But that, you, what you and Alan lost three at Murray, and now you blame it on circle hooks. Look and see. No. I've, Y'all were fish for peanuts. Peanuts couldn't even get the hang in his mouth. You know why? You know how I learned this. You know? Do you know how I learned this? What do you call it? Jug fishing. I learned this jug fishing. I well, that's like different than planer boards. That's total. That's total years resistance. Years and years and years. Ago, board is the I used to put circle hooks on jugs. Well, that's, that's, how I, that's how I learned this. You well, know, that's not. Thing. That's a jug, wrong. a jug is like a board. Is that soft? No, it ain't. Yeah. You don't. None, hey, none of this shit matters. Hey, hooks don't matter. Jugs, none of that shit. You gotta be fishing in the water with the right microorganisms. That's all that matters right there. That'll that'll catch me every time. That doesn't have a lot to do with it. <laughs> I hate microorganisms. 
Jay will block me on Facebook now for disagreeing with me. Damn. Well, dude, I'd have blocked you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Disagreeing with me on a circle hook ain't going to do it, I promise you. But I really, I still don't understand, though. I mean, I like J-hooks. I always said circle hooks are for beginners because I couldn't find none at the tackle shop the other day. But listen, I still don't understand, though, as far as the circle hook goes. If he bites that bait, why that circle hook won't catch him on a planter board, but it'll catch him on a fucking down line. It's just well, something like that. Don't... Well, this is what JR's saying. A noodle-ass down line rod will give when the fish bites. They won't feel resistance. Same thing with a light pulling planter board. Reason I don't pull metal planter boards. I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm demonstrate. I'll, I'll do a demonstration <laughs> out on the water. Well, I, I know that basketball shot. I know all the big fish that I've caught in my life. The only time I ever used a circle hook was in the Chesapeake Bay, and that's because the law says you have to. If you use lead with a treble hook, you'll catch more. And there again, JR, look, look how, many, how many fish did we actually miss in Chesapeake Bay with circle hooks? None. How did we? I we, mean, didn't did lose we, a, we didn't lose yeah, it. We, we didn't miss a fish up there. Last two years, I, honestly, I only think I've missed a fish on a planer board. Using circle hooks. No, no, we did. We went five or eight the last trip. We lost women's three. At odds. <laughs> if you'd have had some worm hooks, Wes, you'd have went eight for eight. You damn right. Damn. No, we would have. Or those uh, little troubles that JR keeps talking about, right? I'm hey, just that's, some that's some North Carolina shit right there. <laughs> I remember years ago, Scott Morgan came down here when he moved out here from North Carolina. He said, Wes, well, all, all the fishermen up there, they use treble hooks, even pulling hair. It doesn't have to be treble. It can be Jay hooks. Look, ask ask Chris Hovis and all them boys that's caught all them giants on the K. Nobody's caught more giants in Middle Tennessee than Hovis and, and Nobody. As as our group goes. They've caught a bunch of giants up there. Every single not, – not, not a single one of them come on a circle hook. I can promise you that. You think they'd have missed them all if they used circle hooks? They would, they would have missed some. They would definitely <laughs> missed some. Well, I went up there with circle hooks. I posted some pictures from today. Circle hooks, Middle Tennessee, planer boards. Okay, if you had one hook you could fish with, if you had to fish the rest of your life with a circle hook or a J hook, which one would you fish with? Circle hook. Oh, they are? Uh, that would be a circle. Absolutely a circle. And hey, you know, one, hey, one if if Scott is have has a you know like a ninety nine percent you know hookup rate with pulling boards with circles, that's it's, good, probably, huh? it's probably got a lot to do with he's pulling those paper thin. What do you call those clear boards? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that probably yep. has a lot to do with it. Exactly. You you, you could have mentioned that. I did it twice. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> raise your hand. Who mentioned that? All right, guys. I'm out of here. Are you guys <laughs> want to stay on or is it good night? No, I'm out. Is it good night? Peace. Good night. Love you.